Hello. Uh, so in this um, in this video, we're, I'm just going to try to give you a quick introduction to how work works. Um, uh, and work in this case is a is defined a little differently than how we normally define it in our everyday um, life. Uh, as you can imagine, this class is a lot of work, but you're probably doing very little actual physics work as it's defined as you're doing it. Um, so work is actually just a way to um, to uh, connect. Um, the, uh, the 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 energy stuff that we've been doing with our um, with the forces things that we've been doing, um, and there's actually a very simple equation that that connects them. And so so um, what it says is that uh, the the work that you can do on a system is just equal to F, which is a force, and it's the parallel force times the distance over which that forces, and, and, and we'll talk about this parallel part later, uh, but let's, for, for right now, let's just call uh, work F parallel distance. Um, and and that parallel just means that it's parallel to the distance that you're traveling. Um, it turns out that this work is a form of energy, and so in other words, uh, this work is um, a, a way uh, of in changing the energy of a system. Um, so let me show you an example. So let's, let's, t let's say I have a, a chair. Um, so here's a chair. It's on the floor, and I'm standing next to it. Okay, and let's say I pick up the chair. All right, which is one of the few things I can actually pick up. Okay, and let's just say that it, it I move it from a height that's that's equal to zero here. So we'll just call y equals zero to a height of let's say uh, whatever a meter here okay now you could go and actually look at our energy equation and realize that at the beginning this potential energy here is just equal to zero because we set y equals zero there the potential energy here is equal to mg h, where h is the height that I've lifted it to, and if we say, you know, the chair has a mass of, uh, I don't know, like uh, three kilograms, it's a pretty cheap chair, um, then uh, the potential energy here would just be three kilograms times, you know, 10 meters per second squared, which is approximately what gravity is. Now let me, let me get my units in there and do, let me do this correctly. Um, Uh, and the height, one meter. And so we'd find that the energy is three kilograms uh, meter squared per second squared, or, or 30, um, 30 uh, joules. Okay, so that's potential energy. Now one thing you could ask is, well wait a second, I thought you said that the energy initial was equal to energy final. At the initial point it looks like we just have potential energy. And at the final point, so as we call this initial and this final, at the final point, it looks like we have a potential energy of 30 joules. What, what just happened? Well, what happened was that I put work into it, which basically was a way of us changing the, the, um, the energy. And of course, the, the energy hasn't, hasn't changed in total, basically. If we looked at a very detailed look at it, we would find that the energy was concerned. Basically, I turned some chemical energy into, into energy that I used to pick up the chair. But from kind of an external system, it looks like our energy has increased, um, or basically that we've increased the potential energy by inputting work. Okay. Um, so let's look at how I actually did that. Well, if you look at what I'm doing, the the chair has some force. Okay. Uh, uh, you know this this force, which is basically um, gravity, which is mg. Okay. Um, I need to lift it up. If I'm just lifting up at a constant speed to apply a force that's equal to that, right? So, so, so I need to apply basically a force. Um, uh, and, you know, I'll just call lift, and that has to be equal to the force of gravity for me to lift it up at a constant speed, right? Or the other way to say that is that the, the lifting force is equal to mass times gravity. All right, to to basically to how hard I lift it. Now this is where we look at our work equation. Well, if I look at the work, what's the energy that I put into the system? The work is just equal to the F, the force, times the distance, all right? So 
Um, uh, uh, and I, I should I should point out this is a, a, a negative um, mg, uh, um, or sorry, it's not negative. It's uh, it's equal to mg. Um, so the lift force is positive. So I'm lifting it with a force of mg. The distance over which I'm providing that force, I start putting that force in basically at the bottom of uh, when the chair is at, at ground level, and then I stop putting that force in whenever I reach whenever I lift up to one meters. Um, so that force, the distance that I'm that I'm applying that force over, is one meter, or basically just the height that I go. Um, so it's just the height that I lift it to, which in our case is one meter. So if I look at the work that I've put in, it's just equal to the force times the distance again. Um, I don't know why I'm switching from lowercase to uppercase d's. Um, it's just equal to force times the distance. In this case, the force again is mg and the distance is h. Well, you notice that the work that I'm putting in is exactly equal to the potential energy I get in at, get at the end. And so this is our connection between forces and energy, basically. It's showing that the connection is basically just that if you take the force and multiply it by the distance over which it's acting, that gives you the energy change that you've basically accomplished. Um, which, uh, again, just a nice way of seeing how forces connect to energy. And sometimes this is useful because there are sometimes forces that we can't write as a potential energy or as a um, or or as a as a as a, a kinetic energy, and this would be a nice way that we can basically connect that stuff in. So the so so that's just a, this again this nice connection that we can make between between work and, and potential and, and, and energy and it basically connects uh, the energy and work stuff together. The next thing I wanted to show you is that um, is what this so I, I didn't kind of explain. Uh, what this uh, this this parallel thing is? Um, let me talk about that for a second. We're going to do a slightly different example. Let's just look at let's say pushing a cart um, up a hill. Um, there's a cart, and we're not actually going to be on the hill just for sake of convenience. So often, whenever you're pushing a cart up the hill, you don't actually provide a force that goes up the hill. You provide a force that's kind of, you know, uh, parallel to the ground, just because of the way that we stand and the way that we use our hands. So let's just imagine we're pushing this way. So that's the, that's the direction of the push. Um, and let's say we're just interested in how much work we're um, we're contributing to this, basically how much work we're putting into uh, pushing the cart up. As we're pushing it. We're going to travel a distance. The distance that we're traveling is going to, of course, be, or the, that the car traveling is, of course, going to be parallel to the slope, which is not parallel to the push, right? So if I, if I move at some distance d, let's say I move at some distance d, all right, I push it from, from the beginning of the arrow to the end of the arrow, while pushing sideways, um, you notice that while I'm pushing, I'm not actually pushing along. And this is actually normally how we, we do this whenever we actually are pushing carts, things like that. Um, this is where uh, this work, this parallel comes in. So again, the work that we're putting into the system is just equal to F parallel times D. So what this means is that the, the work um, uh, is equal to F times D, but it's only the F parallel, where F parallel is the part of the force uh, we're breaking things into components again. This is F push parallel. All right, that's the that's the part of the the force that we're pushing that's parallel to that, um, and that's the part that's parallel to D. Um, uh, so you see it's going in the same direction as D, and you see it's some component of the total force. Um, it turns out that's the force that we should actually use. So let's say the total force of pushing is, I don't know, whatever, 30 newtons, okay? And let's say a distance over we push it is 2 meters. Okay, we can't just multiply 30 times 2. Um, what we need to do is basically push it, is, is figure out what um, the angle is between those, the, the force of the push and the distance. Um, let's just say, uh, for sake of argument, um, that, that the angle is 30 degrees, which would, which would make this 30 degrees. It turns out there's a really easy way to, to, to get just the parallel part of this. It turns out if we just do the force of the push times D 
times the cosine of the angle between them when we've drawn them so that both the backs are both the both the arrows are pointing away. Um, when we use the cosine of that angle, we basically get that little bit. So in other words, the way that we would get the total work that we're doing over that distance would be by putting the, the force, which is the 30 newtons, um, times the distance that we're pushing it over, which is 2 meters, times the cosine of the angle between them, which again in this case is just 30 degrees. And that would give us our total work. And I don't know what that number is, but it would be something. Um, so that's the idea with how we do um, those types of problems. Uh, again, uh, the work that we then provide is a little different. Now you could ask, well, what's that work going into? Well, we would have to know more about the problem if we do it at a constant speed. We have to look at things like that. Um, but for right now, uh, that just gives you some idea about how that works. Um, I think that's about all I'm going to do for now for those. Uh, I, think, I think we'll do a, little, a few more examples in class to show how this works. Uh, but hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction to how forces work uh, with energy and how basically work force and energy are connected. Um, and this also might be a really good uh, point where um, where going into the book um, and looking through the book and, and making sure you, you read the explanations that they give is, is good as well. Uh, work's one of those things that's really good to, um, to look at a few different ways and make sure you understand it. And I guess that clock means that it's about time to end. Uh, I hope that you um, that this this video was uh, helpful. Uh, if it wasn't, please let me know, um, and and we'll try to fix it up. Um, uh, but uh, for now, let's. Uh, that's all I have for work. Okay, thank you, and have a great day.